Today, I'm going to teach on the same things of backsliders. Amen. Amen. The same things of backsliders. He said, first of all, you know, do we all agree <laughs> that we are not of this earth? Do we all agree? So we all agree that we are not. Oh, I got a good response. That is great. That's going to help the message. Amen. So we all agree that we are not of this world, which means we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Hallelujah. That is a whole topic on its own. Huh? But so thank God that we understand that. And let's open our Bible to 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. If you can put in ERV version, it tells us that we know that we belong to God. See, that is why you can confidently say that I am not of the world. And you remember John chapter 3, which Jesus told Nicodemus that there is a kingdom. And once you get born again, you enter into what? That kingdom. Amen. So there is emphasis here that we know. We know. So it is a good thing to hear. Everyone say, yeah, I know that I belong to God. You see, but then there's a comma, and then he tried to define when you say, I am in the world. Yes, yeah, so physically, we are in the world. But the evil one world controls the whole world. That is why you would say, I am not of the world. Because if I am in the kingdom of God, we're talking about spiritual things. Have you seen evil devil before? Who has seen the devil Maybe it say last time on the TV <laughs> when they were acting. Amen. The same way they act Jesus. So we all will say we see him in TV, but is it him? Hallelujah. So the devil controls, the Bible says the devil controls the world. And so if you are a kingdom child, it means you are not of the world. Amen. So let me talk a little bit about this world that the devil is controlling. Hmm? This world. Teach you a little bit. You see, from Genesis, we who believe in the scriptures and not in the big bang. Amen. We believe that God created the heavens and the earth. Do you believe that? Okay. So you believe God created. He commands everything to come to being. Then he formed man out of the dust. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Then he made out of the man a beautiful woman and then, you know, gave to the man. You believe that too, right? Do I have some believers here today? So we all believe that. And then God, I believe in Genesis chapter 2, somewhere Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, you know, God told man, that you have to do what? You have to till the ground to eat. Do you believe that too? Yeah? And the Lord put man in the garden to keep it, you know, and then it didn't to what? Work the soil yeah? and take care of the garden. So from Genesis, we know that man's primary occupation, you know, so I'm talking about the age zero coming up. The world is going through different ages. Hallelujah. I want you to be with me. I want to teach you something very important. Um, Lord, why can't we just stop the clock? <laughs> Amen. Uh, we know the world is going to different ages. So from Abraham, and it's believed by, you know, 12,000 years ago, you know, we entered into. So you see, man was supposed to tilt, you know, the ground. But something, you know, so you know about uh, um, Abraham, and then Abraham, I mean, Adam, his children, uh, one was tilting, one was ready, animal, you know all the story. You know, then we entered into an age that was called agriculture age. Amen. So man was already working the ground, but then at the agriculture age, as population begins to increase, we say, how do we maximize now the production? How do we maximize now the animal that many people will get to eat. What about the crop? So we entered into an age that was called what? Agriculture age. Amen. 
And it was, so 12,000 years ago, it was said that, you know, it began about 12,000 years ago where we develop crops and we develop, you know, animals, right? And then after that, we move from that agricultural age hmm, into what we call what? The industrial age. So it is no more just your father and your mother taking the catalyst and then go and then, you know, you know. Eh? Most of us will, we know. Your father, your mother, and you did it before. Some of us, we did. You have to tilt that ground. You have to. We entered into, you see, and the industrial age, it's continuing. See, some are overlapping. Some places are fully industrialized. Other places, you will see 50% of the population are still in agriculture or their what? The Adam age. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you hearing? I'm teaching you something very important. You see, then the industrial age, which, you know, manufacturing so many things, economies are booming. And then now, say so we have entered into a new age. Who know the new age we have entered now? Hmm? It's all part of the industrial age. So now, exactly, we have entered what is called the shift age. Amen. S-H-I-F-T. A shift, I'm not a professor. Amen. Amen. Open up your heart. I'm not a professor. I'm preaching to you. Amen. I'm teaching you the word of God. Hallelujah. We've entered what is called a shift age. And I'm telling you something very important. Open up your heart to see there's something called evolution. Everything is going through age and time. The same way when you get born, you go through age and time to the end, which will tell you there's end for everything. Hallelujah. And in this shift age, you see, there are three things that are controlling the shift age globalization. Now there is nowhere that is far. China is not far. I mean, it's global. Call it global village. Amen. So we are all in globalization and we can, you know, do anything at any time, you know, basically. And then the second thing in this is the individualism. This age it's not full of individuals. See, in the other ages, you will see the prominence of the family. You'll see the prominence of the society, community. But now, what is prominent, it's individual. Everyone for himself, God for us. So, we, so this age, it's what? You know, individualism. Everybody's striving. Everybody, you know, and then the third force that is guiding this now is the electronic. Amen. So you have about 7.1 billion people on this earth, you know, almost about five point something billion all have cell phones. Electronics are controlling our lives. Amen. So what I'm trying to say, and how does it, yeah, you see, that's why I say I'm not a professor. How does it fit into the message? I'm talking about same things of backsliding. You see, in this age now, I was at work last two weeks, and I saw a message, and they were celebrating someone who has been at the organization for 41 years. Amen. And, you know, to everyone, it is difficult to hear that now that somebody can be at one organization for 41 years to many people in this shift age it sounds absurd amen it doesn't really you know what is wrong the first question is what is wrong with you what is your problem how can you be at one place for 41 years you see, it's, it's, all, it's, it's said that in the shift age, the flow of the individual has occurred because of the explosion of choice. Over, you know, the last few decades, with more choice in every category of endeavor, 
Hmm? Every category. This means that the power has moved, you know, from the consumer and producer, from the institution to the individual. And as the individual is more powerful, you know, than, you know, the collective, we have entered into, you know, the shift. By the time people are retiring, they might have changed job like 11 times on average. You see, scientifically, it is really determined that the world is becoming a difficult place to live in. And the spiritual world, which Jesus told us in John chapter 3, says the kingdom that we must enter, a kingdom it's separate from the kingdom of the earth. And that is why God will say, if you love the world, then the love of the Father is not in you. You cannot exist in the kingdom of God and the, this earth equally. That is why you will say you are not of the world. But unfortunately, the church now, the violence the church is suffering, it's that the world has been drawn into the church. Amen. The church on earth. Because mostly, uh, I don't know if it is the kingdom of God, we can call it by the church, but you and I. And what has come into? Say, it is what I was saying from the beginning. Now, it is difficult for to find someone even to say, those times you say, oh, I'm mechanic, a diacalic. I'm a Presbyterian. I will die a Presbyterian. I'm a staunch. Amen. It doesn't, especially when you come to charismatic now, I jump from one and I hop into the other. I'm from this one, and you see, that is what underlies backsliding. Are you getting it now? Just trying to bring you to understand why the church actually is going through what we see now. Because the minds that are in the church are not different from the minds that are in the world. Our operation in the world and the world system is the same that descends into the church. Are you still here? We've gone home. But when God planted the church, see, as I prophesy, as I 61 verse 3 says, to appoint, and when he was talking about Jesus coming, he said, well, to appoint to those in Zion, those in Zion who mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. See, he's beginning to describe that, you know, something is going to shoot up. Jesus is going to come. He's going to create a new kingdom for believers. And this is what you're going to see. Hmm? The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness. Have you seen any tree before? How many times have you seen that tree being removed and then planted somewhere else? Amen. If it's there, it means it's nursing. And then they take it now and go and plant permanent. And then you don't see a tree that is many years tall. And then, you know, yeah. Even with our technologies today, yeah, we can, you know, boom and say, okay, but it's rare. It's a trees. It will be planted in the kingdom as trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Means it's the Lord that plants each and every one. And he will plant you. And that is why he said, I will give you pastors after my own heart who will teach you. And then he will say, if you don't hear the teaching, then I actually will not bring my ear to listen to you. That they might be glorified. So the kingdom of God, it's separate from the kingdom of the world. And the children of the kingdom of God are expected to actually behave in a different way than the world setting. But mostly what we see in the church now, it's what we call backsliding. Amen. Amen. 
So we may be physically present in the world, but we don't have to conform to the values of this world. That is what makes us kingdom children. John 17, 14 to 16 tells us that I have given them thy word. And this is Jesus Christ. I have given them thy word. And the world have hated them. When you are truly a kingdom child, the world will see you different. The people of the world will, you see, they've hated them because they are not of the world. How many times did anybody tell you you're different? <laughs> because of the way you behave. Because of your mindset. And what comes out of you. Oh, the last, how many times? Amen. But we are in the kingdom of God. We are loved by the world more than we love the world. <laughs> hmm? Because they are not of the world. Even as I am not. Someone will pray. Amen. Even as I am not. Jesus was standing here and he's saying what? Well, even as I'm not of the world. He's a replica. He is the one we follow him. He was in the flesh. We can see him. But he said, I am not of the world. So why don't you believe that you are not of the world? Why don't we make the kingdom of God worth it? The baptism into the kingdom of God. Why don't we value it? Romans 12 verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. You must be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. If your mind is not renewed, I can preach, I can say all this, it will actually do nothing. Even Jesus was walking, he said, hearing, they will not hear, and they will be transformed. Don't be conformed to the world. I just gave you a little lesson about the transformation of the world, which you never thought about before. That even this world is going through ages, changing. Don't be conformed to it. But be transformed by the renew of your mind that you will be able to prove the honors or it is required of you to prove what is good. You have to prove it. Amen. But do we seek to go and prove what is good and acceptable and a perfect will of God? No. Because we spend 30 minutes, 40 minutes in church, and that's it. That makes us Christians. And after that, that's it. Take your child to school and let them just spend one hour just for, and then the whole week, nothing. And then they come out with flying colors. Hallelujah. Are you hearing the word of God? So mostly if you say, want to know that there's a problem, Hmm? For invisible things, you rely on how many nurses and doctors do we have in the house today? Amen. Yeah, Josephine. You are the only nurse here? Okay. What do you rely on? Things that are invisible, what do you rely on? You look at symptoms and signs. Your heart is in you right now. How many people can see their heart or their liver? <laughs> or their pancreas. Amen. Hallelujah. But you can be telling a doctor something right now and he says, oh, it looks like there's something wrong with your pancreas. How does the doctor know that there's something? Because you begin to see symptoms and signs. Why? Because you are talking about mostly things that cannot be seen. And in the kingdom of God, it is an unseen kingdom. It is not a kingdom. I said, by observation, they will say below, oh, here it is, or that, no. It is an invisible kingdom. But our problem is, as Christians, we want to be in the invisible kingdom, invisible. Spurious. 
That is why we chase miracles. That is why, I mean, for lack of knowledge. And so in the kingdom, to actually understand that I'm saying, we have to operate by signs and same things. The signs and same things guide us and lead us to be able to understand what is going on. So my question is right now, how do you know you are backsliding? Amen. How will you tell that I am backsliding? It's almost like I have a liver problem. I have, you know, how do you tell? Hallelujah. Every invisible thing, just put your mind to it. MK is a mechanic will tell you the body will be driving like that, but when he hears the engine without opening it, he will say, carburetor is not working well. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about same things. I don't have too much time, but Lord, let me be able to go through at least. I will start the point and then we will continue. We're not going to rush. Amen. See, I'm teaching about these same things because most of us Christians, we have it, but we don't know. And we are not cognizant of, you know, these same things. So you can talk about headache. See, I went to pick my son, and this weekend I stretched myself a little bit. So when I was going, I saw a man. I'm like, I don't have migraine. So it's very sharp pain in my head, you know? But straight away, I just rebuke and say, I don't have migraine, but I know I haven't slept enough. <laughs> See, so same things. I'm able to diagnose myself to say, because my head, I can't cut it open. To really see why are you, why is this sharp pain coming? Where is it coming from? It's only the same things to tell me that something is wrong. Amen. Amen. So to diagnose backsliding, you need to be able to work by same things. A Christian needs to be able to understand, am I backsliding? Backsliding, which means I am, it is not what it used to be. Amen. And everyone can backslide from the Pope down to the little child. <laughs> because we live, you saw in the scriptures, it said, well, the world is dominated by what? The evil one. You can never let down your guard at any point in time. So let's see. So the first, the first same thing. So I'm now talking about what? Same things of backsliding. Somebody say Amen. And every time you now see these same things, tell yourself the truth and say something is happening to me. Amen. Amen. The first one, same thing is bad company. Say amen. amen. Bad company. Bad company. Hmm? Bad company. You know that the world is full of what? People who are not of the kingdom. And what does the kingdom does to you? It makes you to be able to walk in whether you can prove what is good and acceptable. So if someone is not walking that same walk, how would a person be able to prove what is good? No. So there's a difference between, you know, the kingdom and then the non-kingdom. So to be in a bad company hmm, is a question of who are your friends? It matters most. As the first thing you need to ask yourself, who are my friends? Because they have a great effect on you. I'm just standing in front of you for 30 minutes. Hmm? Maybe next Sunday, you will even have the heart to say, I come to hear more or I don't see you. But that, whoever, will have influence on you sometimes 24 seven. So it matters most who your friend is. If you're truly a kingdom child, it's something you should always ask yourself, who is my friend? Who are they? What are they? Amen. Amen. Let's open our Bibles, 1 Corinthians 15, 33, 34. It said, don't be deceived. And when the Bible tells you, don't take it seriously. Because it is true. Which is why it's not. Amen. 
Okay. Be not deceived. Evil communications will what? Corrupt good manners. Also, oh, I'm, I'm a Christian. And you know, no, don't be deceived. Amen. The one you are associated with will influence you, will have an effect on you. So it's a, if you truly say, I'm born again, I'm a Christ follower, it's a don't be deceived because what is in the world is what? Evil. And you will come under evil communication. We are in a shift age. If you don't know it, know it. There are many things that are wanting to influence. Evil communication. You see the young ones. So it's your phone. Your, it is what? Your friend. Show me your friend. I'll show you your character. They say. Oh, based what? Of the same feather, they flock together. How can you be a child of God? Tongue talking. What? Describe it. Demon bashing. But the one that is influencing you, your friend, the best of the same feather, is the one that doesn't know God. Doesn't even know Bible or, you know, and that is your best friend. Amen. Amen. Are you still here? Are you hearing me? You see, this one's, well, well, even if I finish just one point, is good. Amen. Huh? So evil communicates. Then verse 34 says what? Awake. Come back to your right mind thinking. This message is to help us come back what? to the right mind. Do you really identify? If not, then, you know, let's come and give you again and talk to you again about, you know, the first love. Huh? How you ought to be converted. You know, and Jesus said, you must be born again, except you are born again. You cannot be, you know, so not everyone actually is in the kingdom. And what I'm trying to bring up is that examine yourself. See the same things. Ask yourself, am I really in the kingdom or I'm not? And if you desire really to be in the kingdom, you begin to take steps now to confess the Lord, get into the kingdom and be a kingdom child. Hallelujah. Because church is not going to save you. No. That is not what will save you in the end. Trust and believe me, I'm telling the truth. When you, that last breath is, church will be the last thing you'll be thinking about. Yeah. So now, where am I going? I'm leaving this world. What is next? So it is an individual affair. What I'm teaching you is not a group thing. It's so you will come back. You will come back. Hmm? In the right thinking and stop what? Sinning. Some of you don't know God. And I say this to your shame. Amen. I'm not saying it. Paul is saying it. And I stand in the stead of Paul and I say to you, shame on you. Amen. Some of you don't know God. See, there's something called do me. <laughs> say what? Do me first or I do you. That is a tic-tac we play. When unbelievers are your best friends. You are playing a tic-tac or do me first or I do you. And most of the time, it is what? Do me first, win. Who is going to do me first? You know that you have never even I take you to the street right now, just tell somebody about Jesus Christ. is the last thing you'll be dreaming of. How do you think you're going to co convert your unbeliever friend? When your behavior, because it's also like, let them watch our behavior, and they will, meanwhile, the way you're behaving is the same as the way the person is behaving. What is the conversion? Amen. Amen. So he said, do not be deceived. To be deceived that, oh, yeah, but that is my friend. Make a choice. Hallelujah. Amen. You have a choice to make. 
Proverbs chapter 24, verse 1 to 6, and we saw it. So choose somebody who is what? Higher spiritually to be your friend. I mean, in the world system, is that not what we do? If you want to become a millionaire, will you go actually befriending the, poor, the poorest man? Amen. Because you have your vision and your mindset on something. You want to now go to well, pay for the highest seminars that can teach you how to become a millionaire. What about the kingdom of God? How much are you paying for it? How much are you yearning for it? How much are you putting into it? Akova. Do me first or I do you. And you see, these things are subtle because it's spiritual. It is not something you can see. That somebody's life is affecting me. You cannot see because you're blind. Why are you blind? You hardly see someone who is black. Like when somebody comes in white right now, we all notice. Because we are all alike. It's difficult to see. Jesus, help us. It's a be not envious against evil people. Mostly that friendship, it is basically because oh, they have something in common. Yes, you do have something in common with that unbeliever. You never preach. You never even tell them, look, I am, you know, we can do this, we can buy. You do the same things. So they feel comfortable. There's no discomfort in that relationship. Hallelujah. Are you still here? For what fellowship have righteousness with what? Please go to that. There's two. Hmm? Can you give Kim James? Oh, first, second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Yeah, let's look at second Corinthians. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. I am not saying it. Hmm? Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 15. Don't be. If there's anything you need to hear today, we can backslide based on bad company, based on bad influence. Be not unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? For lack of knowledge. We get destroyed. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You see, if you choose a backslider in the church, because two of you cannot even diagnose that you can see same things. Because even in the church, that you swear you see a lot of perverseness. Hmm? It's not that we all come to church, so we are all followers of Christ. Evil exists in the church. And that is why you can end, and, and most of the time, if you don't take time, you will see people divert into cliques and groups. Birds of the same feather will flock together. It's not that I'm become a friend with this person because it's more spiritual. Shares the word of God, iron sharpness, iron. And I'm deriving some strength from this person. But because we all gather and talk about the pastor together. <laughs> Amen. If it comes to the backbiting, if it comes to talking about that sister, we are on the phone, we are dissecting, and amen. That person becomes my closest friend. <laughs> so I'm not talking about, you know, the world exists in the church. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. And we need to watch it because that is where the bad company even begins in the church. Bible says, test all spirits. We need to understand who is my friend? 
See, go after someone who has something higher. Spiritually, there's something indicating, and I want to mature, and I want to grow. So this person is my friend. It's going to teach me the ways of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, let me just do the second one. I took press to do number two. Then we go. Amen. So first one is what? Stay clear of bad company. Hallelujah. And then number two, same thing. It's what? Looking backwards. Hallelujah. Looking backwards. Luke chapter 9, verse 61 to 62 says, and another also said, how radical was Jesus Christ? How many people believe in Jesus? Let me see by hand. Oh, so we all believe in Jesus Christ. Huh? Let me tell you one thing he said before. <laughs> when somebody came to him, <laughs> he said, and another also said to him, Lord, I will follow you. I have received the Lord as my Lord and Savior. I belong to well, QFC German town. Oh, yeah. Lord, I will follow you. But first, Lord, there are some things I need to set out in the world out there. I mean, my job is more important, you know. My relationship, you know, with them is, is more critical, you know, Lord. Let me first go and bid them farewell. This guy is only talking about farewell, but we never even came to Jesus and said, I'm going to bid farewell. Huh? Assuming you come to the pastor and say, oh, let me just go bid farewell. And the pastor tell you, what did the pastor say? Go to the next one that the pastor will say. Will the pastor see you in the church the next Sunday? Hello? And Jesus said, no man having put his hand on the plow and keep looking back. It's fit for the kingdom of God. You cannot put your hand on the plow and be equally yoked and be in the world and be fit. That is what I'm saying. I'm not talking about church. The kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hmm? See, and I always give this example, and I'm going to wrap up. He said, there's so much to say, but I always give this example. Anytime I read this scripture, because it's so practical. When you walk out of here, go and test it. But please, hear me well. I don't want any lawyer to come and sue me. And say, pastor told me to go do. <laughs> I'll tell you to do the wrong thing. The manufacturer who manufactured your car. There is a reason they made the rear view mirror very small and the windshield very big. Do you know the reason? Because they are not telling you to be driving and looking back. When you are driving, they expect you to be looking forward. The only time you look back is in the split second is to see what is happening behind me. And then I can be able to look forward and navigate myself. That is the essence of what the windshield and the rear view mirror. So go now and then want to experiment. Start moving your car, take your eye off the windshield and be looking into the rear view mirror and then keep going. How many miles per hour do you ride on 270? Hallelujah. How many miles per hour do you ride? 70. And be going 70 and be looking on the, the, the small one. See, it's in the middle there. Small one. And be looking into that. What do you think will happen to you? Amen. Do you now understand Hosea chapter 4 verse 6? My people are destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. Because anyone who does not have that knowledge will go looking into what? The review mirror why you want to go forward. And the church is full of people who are looking at review mirror. Their focus is on the review mirror. Their eye is never on the windshield. And they want to go to the next destination. 
how can we go to the next destination? He said, these people call me by my name, but they deny the power that is in my name. How can we fulfill the calling of God for us? When we are equally yoked, when our life does not transmit, and our life does not indicate we have a vision, we have a destination. We have a purpose for this life, for this spiritual life that we have. You know, I conclude with this. If you take Genesis, Genesis nineteen seventeen, and it came to pass when they have brought them from abroad, that he said, escape for thy life. This is a story we all know. The story about Sodom and Gomorrah. If you read from Genesis 19, from verse 1, you will see the angels, the guys came into the city, the people of the city, the world. And they said, we have pleasure. We have enjoyment. We have many things. And then they came to Lot and said, give us so we can enjoy. And Lot even decided, said, take my daughters. He said, no. And at that point, God said, it is too much. Go hold of Lot, the wife, and the children and said, get out. If any man puts his hand on the plow and keep looking back, it's not fit for the kingdom of God. Get out. Lot's wife could not bear looking forward. She wants to look in the rear view mirror. She could not bear that I'm living all these people see Christianity and the kingdom of God it's almost as something that is so difficult. We love the world. We are envious of evil people and sinful people, Josephine. That is why our friends are in the world and not in the kingdom. What friends do you have in the kingdom? If birds of the same feather flock together, what are, who are you flocking with? That is what I want to conclude. He said there was a lady she was giving a testimony to some Christian group and passionately about salvation. But you see, this also, there's a lot we can learn. And he started the story. Her face was beaming. I said, well, I remember when I was in the world. I remember the boyfriends that I had. I was pretty. Man, and I don't take small, small kids. They take me to Paris, New York, hotels. What? They, they buy things. I mean, I get so many things. Then one day, Jesus came my way. And when he be she began to say Jesus came away, it's almost like sorrow descended on her. I said, now, since I came to the church, all the pleasures and everything is gone. I don't see Paris anymore. I don't see New York. The wonderful hotel rooms and the dining and the food are done. And the pastor told her, now chosen the right. Because that was leading you to your grave quicker. And that is the knowledge you do not. You think it is pleasure. You see, but it tells us how backsliding destroys us. If we have trees planted, we need to be able to identify what are my symptoms. What will cause me to lose the grace that I have of the Lord? If I'm planted in the kingdom of God, I need to be able to focus my eye on the kingdom and be a true kingdom child. It's a spiritual journey. And until you subject your flesh, which is your world, you see, 
because you are spirit living in this body. This is what sees the environment. Until you can subject the pleasures of this body and everything that comes with it and seek the spiritual. You may hear the voice of Jesus says, I know you not. You worker of iniquity. How pitiful it will be. Because look at this woman. Now you are conflicted. You cannot go back fully to the world and you cannot come fully also to the kingdom of God. These days, that is my cry. I say, Lord, it's only your mercy because how can we? We have not denied the world. We have not accepted the kingdom. And God says, he already answered. He said, I'll spew you out as quickly as possible. May we take these words, meditate upon it. Examine your life, look into yourself and ask yourself, Am I backsliding? And may the Lord give us the grace and the mercy. This is what time will allow for today. By next week, we'll continue to look at more symptoms. That is my prayer. And Jesus will give us the grace not to backslide. Do not backslide. Having done all things, keep standing firm and keep growing in the grace of God. Shall we rise to our feet? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. You have won. take our communion you heard the voice of the Lord Jesus says except we be born again we cannot enter into the kingdom of God we will remain in the world if you have never accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior I want to give you this wonderful opportunity come to the Lord receive him and he will translate you from the world and to this kingdom and you will never be the same so with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, anyone, if you've never confessed the Lord, your heart is pricked today. Say, Lord, I want to be your child. Just lift up your hand and I will recognize you and I'll pray with you and the Lord will be with you. He will wash you and cleanse you. You will not be the same. Anyone? Shall we pray? If you can pray with me, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. And I thank you for your revelations. I've recognized that I have the world still in me. But I want to be translated into your kingdom. So right now, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Pray that you will wash me in your blood. And you will write my name in your book of life. From today, I am born again by this prayer and I have denounced and will denounce all the things of the world. I'm going to look into that windshield and look to you, the author and finisher of my faith. I'll be yours. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you pray this prayer, you will see a number on your screen. Maybe you are on Zoom, YouTube or Facebook. Just reach out and let's begin a journey that will lead us in the glory of God.